Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa hala wa barakatuh. Uh, the topic of discussion today is the uh, human rights in Islam. Before we go on to discuss human rights in Islam, what is human rights? Human rights refers to the basic rights and freedom to which all human beings are entitled. These are usually, this usually include but not limited to right to life, right to liberty, right to freedom of thought and expression, and equality before the law. The first attempt by human beings at laying down basic rights of human beings is contained in what is regarded as the first document of human rights, which is uh, the Magna Carta. It is also known as Great Charter. It lays out certain rules and regulations guiding every state on how, or certain legal rights that every human being is entitled to. That was long before the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as espoused by the uh, United Nations. Uh, uh, the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. However, um, members of Organization of Islamic Conference saw the need to include the perspective of Islam to human rights and that gave birth to Cairo Declaration of Human Rights, which was endorsed by 45 members of Organization of Islamic uh, Conference in 1990. And it's basically the same thing as uh, the Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations, except that it added that any discrimination, it, it forbids discrimination on the basis of race, color, language, belief, sex, religion, political affiliation, social status, or other consideration. Now, human rights in Islam. I want to add at this juncture that long before human beings felt the need to create rights for human beings, the Almighty Allah in the Holy Book has already laid down natural human rights that are inalienable. And these are, number one, right to life. The right to life is regarded as the foremost basic right of any human being, as contained in Surah Al-Maida, Quran 5, verse 32. And it states, whoever kills a human being without any reason like manslaughter or corruption on heart, it is thought he had killed all mankind. In addition to that, Surat Anam says that, do not kill a soul which Allah has made secret, except through the due process of the law. This is contained in uh, Quran 6, verse 151. This means that for anybody to take the life of another, it must follow a due process of law. And th this is one of the reasons why uh, homicide is the second sin after ascribing partnership with the Almighty Allah. You cannot take a life except through the process of the law. And uh, if we take into consideration that this law has been in existence uh, for over 1,400 years, you know that long before you have a Universal Declaration on Human Rights or the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights in Islam, which was uh, uh, subscribed to as recently as 1990, you know, the Almighty Allah felt the need for each and every one of us to preserve other human life. Following closely is freedom to liberty. Every human being, according to the Holy Quran, 
has the right to his life or her life. Nobody has the right to take anybody as slave. One of the popular sins of the Holy Prophet as espoused by Buhari is that there are three categories of people against whom I shall myself be a plaintiff on the day of judgment. Of these three, one is he who enslaves a free man, then sells him and eats his money. This shows clearly that as far back as the days of the Holy Prophet we know that you have no right to take the freedom of another human being away. And if we look at the history of Islam, we see the way, the systematic way in which uh, slavery was abolished in the whole Saudi Arabia. This is one of the beauties that, uh, of Islam that we have today to guide us long before we have a uh, declaration of human rights by uh, United Nations. Following closely to this is right to justice. The Almighty Allah, in his wisdom, spread it out in Surah Maida one more time, uh, Quran uh, chapter, eight, verse, uh, um, chapter 5, verse 8, and it says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for Allah as witnesses to fair dealing, and let not the hatred of others to you make you swerve to wrong and depart from justice. Be just, that is next to piety, and fear Allah, for Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. I will also refer you to Surat and Nisa, Quran 4, verse 135, which says, O oh, you who believe, stand out, family for justice, as witnesses for, to Allah, even as against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin, and whether it be against rich or poor, for Allah can best protect both. Follow not the loss of your heart, lest you swerve, and if you distort justice, or decline to do justice, verily, Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. This shows clearly that everybody is entitled to fair hearing. Do not be a witness against someone except you are sure of what you are saying. Um, equality of human beings is another area that Allah has given us, which we don't need any other person to tell us. If you look at uh, Quran, uh, chapter 49, uh, verse 13, it says, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other, not that you despise each other. Which means every human being is equal before the sight of the Almighty Allah. Allah has just created us for us to be of different types, but in order for us to collaborate with each other. If there is uh, the basis of superiority, according to the Almighty Allah, should only come as to the knowledge and the fear of Almighty Allah and in doing good towards the cause of Allah. No other person can claim superiority over another person. Um, race, you cannot use race or religion or tribe to, kill, to claim superiority. And this is why you see well, the problem we have in Palestine and, and Israel today, it should never be. If we have true understanding of the requirement of the Almighty Allah from us. In conclusion, Islam prescribes a general principle which is not prescribed by any other declaration for the right to cooperate among ourselves which means that regardless of who you are, what tribe you belong to, religion, we should be able to cooperate, to foster the cause of human beings together. May the Almighty Allah guide us all our right, and may we have full understanding of the requirements of our religion so that we all be better individuals.